It isn't easy to throw grenades from a moving carrier. You need a lot of practice. Make an oblique approach to the target. Keep about 20 or 30 yards away from it. To show you how it's done, we'll stop the carrier for a moment. The commander's best arc is to the left front. He first observes his target, right leg back, pulls the pin, grips the armor plate, and throws. The driver has so little room that he can't hope to throw a grenade from his position. By far the best position for throwing is from the observer's compartment. The commander will demonstrate this. His right knee is back on the floor, his left leg is in front of him. With practice, two grenades can be thrown as the carrier passes the target. The gunner doesn't usually throw grenades, but if this becomes necessary, his best arc is to the rear, and his throwing position is like that of the observer, but facing backward. He remains under cover until the grenades have exploded. Normally, when grenades are to be thrown in action, the gun is mounted on the rear mounting. So as the carrier retires, he can spray the bombed area. If the Bren is fired from a carrier, active service has shown that the best place for it in the Mark I carrier is in the offside rear compartment. It's fired over the head of the driver, who should have his seat down and, if possible, his ears plugged. On the sponson, it can be fired from the front, the side, or the rear. The mounting being used here is called a pinion mounting. The idea comes from Libya, where the pinion has been extensively used. It's made from the original ACAC mounting, the ends of which have been cut off and welded together. The result is a good steady gadget which fits into any of the ACAC mountings. It's unnecessary to take this pinion off the gun, even for dismounted action, as it in no way interferes with the gunner's movements. From the forward ACAC mounting, the Bren can be fired in all directions. Let's have the observer in for a moment to show this. The gun, on the pinion mounting, is simply handed round in a circle. The gunner, fourth man, or carrier commander can each change magazines. Some of you might have a cradle mounting. This makes all-round fire even simpler, but the gun has to be removed from it for dismounted action. If you have no mounting, you can just fire the Bren from the sponson, as already shown. In mounted action, the boy's rifle is fired by the commander through the loophole. The base of the front support is pulled tight against the sponson. The commander leans forward, takes a firm grip and keeps the butt well into his shoulder. Some people are afraid of the recoil. Actually, there's less recoil this way, and the armor plate screens one from the noise and blast. Hello, it's that man again. Company commanders will often find it useful to send their own mortar men to the carrier sections under their command. Because of the carrier's greater range, speed, and bomb carrying capacity. These mortar men should be trained to act with carriers. Well, now you're here, take your equipment off. You don't need to wear it. Put it in the carrier with the rest of the crew's gear. When mounted, the gunner helps the mortar man, and together they act as a team. It's no use bringing along an ordinary mortar for this job, because unless it has six holes drilled in the base plate, it won't fit a carrier mounting. This mounting gives the mortar a good solid foundation, and that makes for better shooting.
Seven bombs are carried in the spare barrel bin. One HE is kept loaded in the mortar. And four in the mortar man's pouches. So there are always 12 bombs ready for immediate action. The mortar can be fired from the carrier either as a cannon or high angle. We'll give you a demonstration of the drill for high angle first. The success of this method of control depends on the speed of delivery of the first bomb and the accuracy of the commander's corrections. This is most used because the carrier will normally fire from behind cover, the commander controlling the fire from an observation post. The carrier goes as near as possible to the gun position. The commander dismounts and takes the Bren from the gunner. Take care of your weapons like this. The gunner follows the commander forward while the carrier gets back into cover. Dismounted, the crew are infantry, so they must use field craft. Making full use of the dead ground, the commander approaches his first position. He raises himself cautiously to take a look. That lone tree is the target. He signals the Bren forward. Having seen the extent of the cover, the gunner crouches and crawls exactly as the commander did before him. Meanwhile, the mortar team are getting into cover. This should be level ground when you're likely to use the mortar. While camouflaging, they must keep an eye on the carrier commander for signals. The commander indicates the target to the gunner. Drivers, don't forget, this is the time for urgent maintenance. The fourth man can keep a watch. But if he isn't there, you'll have to do everything yourself. The commander gives the gunner a fire task. Then, by waving the black flag, he signals to the carrier that he wants the mortar. The driver mounts and prepares for action. The commander places himself between his carrier and the enemy. If possible, he chooses a position dead in line. In fact, he tries to make himself an aiming post. The driver traverses the mortar, keeping it lined on the commander. The commander wants AG, so he gives this signal. The first bomb is fired automatically at 400 yards, unless the driver knows the range. Short and right. Now correction. Boldly, up 50. And 50 left. You'd only need to tap on the barrel. The right amount can be got with practice. The mortar fires at an area target. So when a bomb lands as near as that on normal ground, the commander signals on target. The drill now is four rounds rapid. Then a pause for observation. The driver would go on firing bursts of four bombs unless he got this signal, cease fire. Now the signal for smoke. The commander's decided to withdraw. The driver has gauged the wind correctly with his first bomb. He gets the on target signal and proceeds to lay a screen. When the smoke is thick enough, the commander signals with the yellow flag for the carrier to come up before breaking off the action. Now we'll fire the mortar as a cannon. Fire from hull down position when you can. The driver's job is to get square on the target. As always, there's one bomb down the barrel ready for immediate action against any surprise target. That butt is the target. 
The gunner does his own observation and correction. Actually, this is much easier for a fourth man than for the gunner. Low angle fire is speedy and accurate. It's especially useful when handling smoke as you get all the smoke on the ground and none is lost during flight. Behind a good screen, the carrier retires. Another HE bomb goes down the barrel and the muzzle cover is replaced. We've shown you weapon handling from the carrier. That's to help you in an emergency. But the carrier is not a tank. It's only meant to get you quickly to your ground action position. So don't forget, when in doubt, dismount.